So, uh, I want to learn more and first say uh, what happens post graduation. Post graduation. Yes. Right. So, people, um, I want to talk here a little bit from a philosophical handle. Okay. There's this guy, uh, father of existentialism, called Soren Kierkegaard. Now, I am an existentialist to an extent. In that extent, I like to existentialists believe that you exist and then you find meaning for your existence or you find meaning that justifies your existence, whether it's a miserable existence or a bad existence, you, are, you exist regardless, right? Then you find something just justifies that meaning. Now, existentialism, you know, there's essentialism. Essentialism means that excess precedes you. In that means that yes, now yeah, that means the function of a thing are very very yes. Now school provides people that kind of excess. So your excess already defines uh, comes before your identity. That means that if you remove that school, that excess, you are nothing. Mm. Now I feel like when people graduate, they are nothing. Most people are nothing. They just realize that oh, yeah, they are in free of paper. So now what? Like, <laughs> okay, what am I now? Okay. I was this, I was a student. That was my identity. That was my, my essence. Identity. That was your essence. Now, that like post grad. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's not so flashy thing. I'm post grad because okay. Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to get a job next? Are you getting well, married next? Like, this place I get to serve because that's the next thing. Yes. Yeah, I, I got to serve. Next thing, oh. you get a, a new identity. Now you're coming back. I'm like copa. Yeah, that's your new So this is in copa. Now, okay. What next? Because this is they provide you with essence that. Make you not have to think so much about the meaning of existence because if you remove these things that give you responsibility, these things that give you excuse for doing whatever you're doing, if you remove them, what are you? If you are stripped of your school, if you are stripped of, if if, if most students I know today are stripped of their students, life. they have nothing. They, they only wake up, eat, wake up, eat. There's nothing, and that does not sustain them. Let's go back to that the right thing you mentioned that okay, but even if you have access to eat. Yeah, almost, almost only with pursuit of how to feed your mouth. You yeah, still no identity behind you. So I feel like life after post, post uh, I'm still a student. So I think I have a couple of semesters to go. Uh, but I have tried so much because I'm an existentialist. I have tried so much to create what identity for myself would look like. And I assume that most people won't decide to stay back to university because life after the university is like an habit. It's scary. You know, I, think it's, I think it's a scary thing. It's uh, scary. You know, people are not ready. And I think, uh, you know, I, I, I think that was a bit of my issue with private universities. That was because public universities, that does, they, they should be built here, but you are still a bit outside. But private universities, yeah, when you're done with those four years and they throw you out into, and they throw you out and then God help you, you serve, if you serve everything, that's good. I, but if you don't serve it, you're going to realize that, oh, like, what have I done? Now that you've gotten your certificate here. Unless you're someone that is fine with nine to five, five. you just want to start the nine to five. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you're okay. Or maybe you I think most people that go to private universities, I think you should have a bit of a comfortable family if you can't afford going to a private university in Nigeria right now. Because private universities are like one name and above. But like I'm saying, yeah, what, what, once they throw you into a private university, are you, you don't start thinking, okay, is it nine to five now that I want to do? Or, or in, am I, do you find satisfaction if I don't know if people are why if people find satisfaction in like getting a job immediately and those day nights of just end more? Yeah, yeah. I I don't know personally it's not that's not what I'm after. And there are other things that I my mind as a person and I realize that okay, I'm not about to risk I'm not going to get all these things done. Like ultra is university. Why didn't I prepare myself? I didn't I why wasn't I working to do things? Why did I university that's why I said that university it don't, makes people yes, you it. don't don't have to think about all of these things when we learn university. When you are a student, when you have that the, excuse as a student. I you know one thing that I can also hold here philosophically is that past that university stage, you are a graduate now. Okay. Let's say you have, you have an excuse, now you can go outside for other one year. Yeah. Then what? So, you know, Kick have said here that here that um what causes anxiety? Is the dizziness of freedom. The the problem of choice when there's so much things for there's so much things to be you fall into that anxiety like, oh my god, what am I going to do next? Oh do I marry this girl? No, you so you so easy when everything is planned for you. Like, and that's uh, it's why we have so much choices, so much options that that's, that's, that's why I like existentialism over 
essentialism. Because essentialism, existentialism says that you are forcedly <laughs> really yeah. He said that you are firstly an individual and whatever it is you are, whether temporary or permanent. Mm-hmm. So yeah, mm-hmm. it comes second. Now you have to put that identity for yourself. Most people, especially essentialists, they have the identity, identity for them in form of religion. Because the religion provides you that I said. When you're not kind of thinking that there are a lot of ways to yeah, 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 yeah. political ideologies. You can be a feminist for the rest of your life. You can be a feminist for the rest of your life. You can be a capitalist, a socialist. You can dedicate yourself to one thing and one thing only because that thing gives you meaning. Go for and we are stripped of it. We are stripped of it. Like, say, for example, a Christian, you know, just go to church, go to mosque, but go to church, go to this, go to that. You die, go to heaven. You know, it, it gives you some essence, some, some meaning that sustains your existence in this material place and after you die you that's why that's why everyone that's love. why i'm of the opinion that you need to actually when you're doing secondary school you need to actually not just jump into university i think you need to discover yourself you know when i think people people, people that are, i think so our people are like the most lucky and also the most unlucky people in the world if you actually <laughs> yeah if you actually so far it gives you an advantage but it also creates a problem for you it does that but I can relate to that a lot. It also creates a problem for you, but if the moment you become self aware, you realize that, okay, because I think because of a lot of people are, we are so used to what people are going to say, but you need to realize that it's your, your, your own law, it's your own life, and then regardless, if you tell someone that, okay, you want to stay back here, yeah, just to know yourself. Because I think once you get thrown into the university system, you do not have the room to. You don't have the room to okay, start your life and get what I want to do with my life. What I want to do. You know what? It is automatic. You just you just play the game. Yes, you play the game for the next six years. I'm sure the six years of your life. Do you know what? Do you know what makes it worse? Well, that this six years can be some of the worst years of your life. Because for one, you chose English. We are studying adult science or adult clinical. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. You this. But for six years, you can It's like you can It's like your course for six years. You like yourself. You got uh, it's, it's and then it's it's, it's, it's your it's your forming. There's no sense of meaning. It's almost like getting married to someone you hate. I guess where someone you need to start with. <laughs> it's like getting you getting married to someone you don't know. I think that's a bit better than getting married to someone you hate. If you are so on your ears, it's terrible. Like, it's smart. Someone that you don't know, you know, like, there's there's almost a potential of knowing them. But knowing them. And I think that's what happened with uh, political science. Because I studied political science and I wanted to go for English because I've always been like best in English throughout my, ed- throughout my years of education, right? Yeah. So I thought, okay, this is going to be easy. Let me just go for English. Come really? easy. Then I think English in OU was like 71 there about. And I wasn't like particularly confident in my work results. So, but I was part- confident in my. Post UTMA results because I was already like well off academically. So I decided that, you know, I'm going to choose something that I'm very likely to do to source it out. So I chose political science, which kind of baffles me that it's below English because political science is very, very. I feel like it should be other than English. Yeah, I feel like the good country where that English goes. I'm not for political science and I was seeing things like what I'm right now was given to me a little bit by, by, by political science, but I had an identity. I knew what I wanted to go for. Yeah. Fight. But then I chose this route, but knowing that, okay, it's used by adventure. I don't know what's going on there, but it's the alternative because I either feel like this, I do try again or go for this and, you know, figure out my life from there. From there. Yes. So, and I did. And it has provided me so much avenue that I feel like, I, that I feel like so much that I don't know whether I am more interested in politics, history, philosophy, psychology, politics, in geopolitics, geography. I am well vast in most of these things, and it baffles me sometimes that I have difficulty determining what I want to well, dedicate myself to. That's going to be a problem for you because you're starting to sound like a multi potentialist. Um, also, and that's a problem about the avenue of choice. Having too many choices is, 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 a, is a problem. That, that's it, the dress of freedom. You, you make this choice, it's like, you feel like you're going to regret it because you're like going to regret it because you have so many options. You know, if you're left to do it, so much, you'll be like, okay, is it that this or this? If you feel like this, you know, okay, then you should have made this one. But if you feel that, like, 100, we have 100 options. I feel at what I'm going then to realize that. Okay, I, I want us to end this discussion here. Okay. On um, on a piece of advice, like regarding this one thing you said, that anxiety that comes with you know, other multiple choices. Yeah. Now, what Kierkegaard offered as a panacea for the business of freedom is a nib of it. Just, just do it. Just do it, man. Just like, that you can be stuck in analysis paralysis, right? Just that's it. Like, yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. You are stuck. You are stuck. Everyone is moving past you. You're like, oh, this or that. And it is what's, what's for people with, uh, with OCD. I have my, my problem with OCD. 
and I used to my advantage. That's why I entered, you know, graphic design. It's, it's good for me. Now, you can be stuck in that analysis paralysis, but what you can also do as a countermeasure is take a leap of faith. That's what KKL suggested. Now, take a leap, take a leap of faith and see what happens. What happens when you fold? What happens when you fall? No, no. no you fold. That's lie. You know, it's like, you, you can, if, you, if you figure out the outcome of if, other you said, your actions, you're going to go mad. You see the good thing about folding that once you fold it once, it's not as scary as before again. So you fold it again, you can just try something else. Yeah. It's not so scary once you fold once. The problem is that a lot of people, I don't think a lot of people have failed before. A lot of people, I don't think a lot of people have actually like failed. A lot of people have not experienced failure all their lives. They've just been cruising, cruising, cruising. And I was like, they play it Wednesday. The Marines has a play to save and the Marines they experience feeling for the first time, so I don't be able to climb back. Yes. And then yeah, I just I just know that you are not too high. You know, there are some levels of height that when you feel from that height, it takes a lot. <laughs> you know, but if you have fallen down falling down a few times, if you climb to certain level, you fall, you'll be able again, to undo yourself. Again, this is uh, so that's one thing you mentioned initially. Don't be afraid to fail. 